We came, we saw, we spiced. We, well, I did. You, you, you spiced. You, you more spiced than I did. out by the third episode. I don't I, think you've made that far. Like the first one? No, I, I got the third episode. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah, the, the, the chat. The chat about the special magic. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, okay, this show's Oh, not the transition me. magic? The transition magic, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, it was obvious the show was not for me, but I never expected it to be for me. So we're going to talk about High Guardian Spice finally dropping on Crunchyroll at the very end of their time with Warner Media. Mm -hmm. uh, the show was announced like three or four years ago to great fanfare. It was an all inclusive, all diverse group of creators working on this show. There was no footage of, of what to well, expect. Well, let me just tell you that their like almost Kickstarter-esque commercial pretty much was dead on. It was diversity, diversity, diversity. Now, that isn't necessarily all bad. And we're going to talk about it. It's not, it's not for us. But uh, anyway, we're going to, we're going to talk about, you know, how it, it does what it says on the tin, I guess is what they say in the UK when something literally does what it's mm -hmm. advertised to do. So they're, 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 it wasn't that far off the mark, which is exactly what everybody was afraid of. Right. And the problem with that is that people were under the impression, this is where most of the anger stems from, yes. honestly, they were under the impression that their Crunchyroll subscriber money went to Japanese animation studios and it does not. I, in fact, I don't even think any Japanese animators worked on this show. I, I sat through the credits and it looked to me like mostly Western names with a few Korean names in there. I don't think any Japanese animators worked on the show at all. So that's not gonna help their case. That being said, had this show been announced for Cartoon Network. It's, it feels Cartoon Network, not Crunchyroll. I don't think there would have been nearly the backlash. Mm -hmm. People would have been like, oh, it's another Steven Universe. And it would totally been, fit on yeah. Cartoon Network. It would totally fit on one of the Disney, their Disney things like with the Owl House and all that. It just, it was not a Crunchyroll type show. Yeah, so we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the backlash, which has been severe on Crunchyroll. And again, it's not just the show. Uh, even though the show is definitely not for us, but it is the, the uh, yeah, I guess, feeling that people had a bait and switch. I think that's know? what it was, more than the show itself. Yeah, it was like, hey, we're going to give you money. They talked about, you know, jacking up their rates. Hey, help the Japanese animators. We want to help the Japanese animators. And then they turn around and, and take that money and produce a, a Western show. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah, it has Korean animators working on it, but so does Gravity Falls. You know? right. So does every other, so does She-Ra, you know, every other show. And by the way, if you like Netflix She-Ra, you're going to love oh, this I'm show. Oh, I'm sure you will. You're going to love yeah. this show. It's a, it is, in the comments, the shippers are already out. Shippers are already out, and that's what they wanted. They wanted ship bait. So we're going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over 238,000 subs. Uh, thank you so much for the support. Give me a woohoo. Woo yeah, you, you're just not feeling the woohoos today. No, it's not that. I keep thinking about what I want to say. And then I'm just like, you know, and I'm also tired. So I'm trying. From all the spice. No, from being sick for two or three days. Oh, that's, so, that is yay, true. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, she's been sick. So we are one of the few media outlets. And we are a media outlet. Actually, mm -hmm. we have our own yes, media Yes, we company. do, actually. Um, so we're one of the few media outlets that has been talking about High Guardian Spice. It Again, there was a lot of fanfare. It was Margaret Dean, the head of women in animation. This was going to be, uh, you know, this amazing triumph of a show. Uh, we had nothing to see except for some concept art. But yeah. trust her, look at all the, the diverse people working on it. It was going to be Because that always sells a show. You know, plucking people off of Tumblr. Literally just plucking random creators off of Tumblr and handing them millions of dollars always goes well. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it felt like somebody wasn't steering the ship on this thing. But yeah, we watched it. Definitely. I watched it. I watched some of it. Yeah. As much of it as I, I felt I could watch. And honestly, I watched I watched it, but I did skim through a lot of it because I, it was boring. And, you know, it is exactly what you were worried it was going to be. Um, they now, now, that being said, it's not all bad either. I mean, it's not a one star show. It's not a five star show. It's probably like a two and a half to three. It's in the middle, but it was definitely not a crunchy roll show. Oh God. Yeah. It, it was not a crunchy roll show at all. And I, I, I do see why they held it back as long as they did, because if they had led with that instead of the webtoon shows and the other stuff, 
you know, they had. Uh, you did go back for more, though. I did. I did. I did the yeah. third, and then I went back and I watched the rest. And um, it was clearly being set up for second season. And yeah. there are people in the comments like, oh, I can't wait for season two. You're not going to probably get a season two for several reasons we'll talk about later. But there are a lot of anime shows that are done better. It clearly yeah. takes a lot of inspiration. It, there even is an effing Sailor Moon transformation sequence where they turn into mermaids. And but the one the one dude's upset because he didn't get to go with him because he really wants to be uh, use that that transformation magic. We'll leave it at that. There there's a lot of a lot of that in this show. Um, and you know when we're talking about that, we're not like look. This is an original thing. Well, other than being a Harry Potter fanfic, it, it is very Harry Potter fanfic. <laughs> it is Little Witch Academia fanfic. It's Sailor Moon. It's like yeah. Oh yeah, a lot of the tropes from those shows it, it is very generic. But there is a heavy emphasis on. Uh, certain identity politics, very, mm -hmm. very, very heavy emphasis on it. Uh, again, not for us. Some yeah, no, to like be it, fair, but. it isn't like it's in your face, but it's done in a way that it, it, it's, it's actually woven into the story. So it's not like, you know, they're just putting it on top just to put it there. But they, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know how else to word it. So there's a story there. The pizza boy shows up, right? Okay. It's not just like you're putting it there on top of. The story what? is the pizza boy shows up at the door, knock, knock. I've got your hot pizza. Oh, hey, I'm a bored housewife and things happen. No. Is that that's a, the plot. I'm confused. No, no that has nothing to do with anything. That didn't even make sense. Probably not. Anyway, um, I don't even know what you're hell talking about. You didn't even watch it. Um, but it's, it, it's, I can't explain it. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's very overt, but at the same time, it's, it, it doesn't, it doesn't feel completely overt, but it's like, it's still cringy. Um, yeah, I it's mean, it's not for adults. Uh, no, and there are going to be parents that don't want their kids watching it either. And I'm, I'm trying to figure this out too. This is what threw me back because we're watching this. We're like, man, shit must be real because it had a mature content. Well, right. I know why. Okay, one they have they do, do they do kill a lot of things with swords. Well, not a lot of things, a few things, which is makes me sad. Two, um, they they say bad words like like you know badass and shit. Oh, I thought it was going to be like, you know, take me now. No, badass and shit. And Show then they say a lot of adult themes, like sexual themes. I don't know what they mean, like, because orientations are listed. I don't know. I, I, I just, because I mean, the thing it, is, it wasn't overtly sexual. I mean, in, in regard to they were out there doing weird stuff or anything like that. That yeah, wasn't like that. It was, I mean, it was a very, you know, other than doing what they said it's in, it was a pretty tame and the art style too i think it's weird because it's like the juxtaposition of a very cute art style mm -hmm. with you know I, I did watch them you know they're stabbing dragons and they're bleeding and stuff and yeah. you know they are swearing here and there but it was weird for the i, I mean on crunchyroll it, to get a, an adult like, content one. I, it here's what i'm thinking i think it was more like a cartoon network thing and they were trying to 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 literally spice it up to yeah. put it that it would be an adult thing but it was never going to fly on crunchyroll for numerous reasons um bait and switch being number one and then it's not really crunchyroll as content so um yeah, I don't know what else to say about it, but uh, it, it's it's it is what it is. This is interesting. This is Sophia Narwitz, uh, who is trans, mm -hmm. by the way, saying that the show sucks at writing trans characters. Yeah, this was it really really was this was really like out of place. Like they're just having a conversation. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, by the way, I'm trans, and there's well, magic to make you trans. It was really weird too because if it's supposed to be for adults. Adults don't need a definition on what being trans means. Yeah. Um, and they kept doing that like, well, here's what it means to be trans. And they kept making a big emphasis on, so you can have trans magic, so you can be yourself. So you can be yourself. And they, and they kept, I don't know, it was more like, it felt more like they were trying to teach kids about what it was masquerading as an adult show. Because this is not a show for, it's just a show for kids with those kind of themes in it. Yeah. I'm sorry, but that's just what it is. Before, After. <laughs> you know, anyway, yeah. um, yeah, and there was a focus on that. Now, of course, you know, the creator of the show is trans, so, you know, it doesn't surprise me that that would make it into the show, but, um, I do think that this was probably originally designed to be a Cartoon Network show, and they just it, used... I can't think it's not. ...crunchyroll money, and that's where people are getting pissed off. They're like, you know, you could, well, somebody said up here, like, you could have taken this money... And, and bought more anime. You could have paid Japanese animators better. And, and I actually, uh, you know, videotape the um, videotape. See, that's how old I am. Videotape. Why? You're old. Tape. There's no such thing as You're tape. You recorded. I recorded 
the ending, and it's almost all Western oh, names. Oh, God, and the songs. Can we take a moment to talk about the songs on this show? Uh, yeah, they I are horrible. Getting, yeah. The songs are horrible. The intro and outro songs are terrible, and they're lame, and I hate them, and I skip past it every chance I had because it was painful to be subjected to. Yeah, so it, there were some Korean, yeah, there we go, uh, Korean people working on the animation. Now, people, you know, of course, you got to get people in there. They're like, don't you know, clownfish, that Japan outsources a lot of its work to Korea. Yeah, we did know that. It's like, yes, we do. We do. Thank you very much. But but that wasn't what they said, the people, when they were raising prices on them. Yeah, this sounds to me like they bypassed Japan entirely and just went directly to... Right. You know, so, yeah. I mean, try yeah. again. Find a new narrative. VR movie, which um, does a lot of anime. They do a lot of anime, But it's too, like, but. you know, the, the only reason we pointed out was because that was the excuse they gave to people to raise prices on them. Yes. They were going to do this, and then this is what they gave them. So this is why people are mad. Do I think it's worth a one star? No. Probably a two or a three. I'd say probably two and a half to three. Um, I don't think... It deserves the hate it gets, but I do not think for one minute it should be on Crunchyroll. No. I do not think for one minute that Crunchyroll people should have no reason to be mad because they were kind of lied to, and they were. Uh, it is exactly what the, the Kickstarter-esque trailer told you it was. Yes. Um, and people are losing their shit on the comments, and it's glorious. Now, I will say, there are some people who like it in the comments, and when they like it, other people jump all over them for liking it. Don't do that. That's not necessary. They're allowed to like it. You're allowed to not like it. I would say the same thing if they did it to you. Yeah, I would say in this case, and this is where, you know, we kind of come down on it because people say that we hate everything and we mock everything, whatever. It's like... No, we don't. Where we have issues is when you take an existing IP, especially, like like She-Ra, and, and you turn it... You basically take classic She-Ra, turn it into High Guardian Spice, and then tell the fans of the old show that they're terrible. Right. This is its own you know? thing. This is its own thing. But I, it did I, not belong on Crunchyroll. It did not belong on Crunchyroll. I will 100% agree with that. Again, if this had been... Dropped on Cartoon Network. Well, one, they would have cut a lot of the identity politics out of it and the violence. But two, uh, there wouldn't have been nearly the backlash. Because it looks it looks like a Steven Universe. It doesn't or a, you know, fit on Crunchyroll. It does not fit. It's almost like, you know what it almost feels like? It feels like they were they were going to try to make all these shows like this on Crunchyroll and tell them that the subscribers they had to like it. But the backlash was so fierce that they, they lost their credibility to do so. I think their plan was to go get more shows like this one and shove them onto Crunchyroll. Yeah, and I think that that got curtailed. Now I had you know some information back channel that there there was probably a lot of drama surrounding mm -hmm. the show, which is why this was the first original that was announced and it wound up being the last one I think mm -hmm. to be released. Uh, I don't know. If they're they're holding it back for a reason. Yeah, and they're only dumping it now because you know Warner is going to sell Crunchyroll to to Funimation to Sony, so they're like, well, we got this thing laying around. Now we know for a fact that the show's been done for like a year or two. And the production team has disbanded. And Ray Rodriguez, uh, who is the, the showrunner, is moving on to a DC project. Right. Because, you know, when your show does that bad and causes that much backlash, the best thing to do is get hired in another project. Yeah. And I'm thinking that it was kind of like a consolation prize. Like, well, we're not going to we're not going to renew this one uh, for sure. I can't completely disagree with one thing, though. They like Princess Tutu. Princess Tutu was good. Princess Tutu was I, good. I do like that one. Yeah. So I can't, they're not all bad, they're like I, Princess Tutu. I will also give Ray Rodriguez credit where credit is due, okay? Um, and actually, I guess I guess I kind of can with Noel Stevenson, too. Despite all the shit that the show has gotten, Ray Rodriguez was not out there attacking people. Mm -mm. Like, they weren't out there just, you know, you know, shitting on people on Twitter and running at the mouth on Twitter, uh, you know. Well, Noel Stevenson wasn't either, because she had already used that up for, for people, yeah. years before when she yeah. was going around attacking people for no damn good reason, other than the fact that they were male. Yeah, that there's that. So I won't there give her that. a pass, because she did it before. She just cleaned up her act, and she got deals. Yeah, um, but but Ray was not out there attacking people, and it has to be hard. I mean, look, I'm going to be honest. You, you put the thing out there. It's not even, you know, nobody has a chance to watch it, and you've got the entire you know, like anime scene shitting on you almost daily. And then, you know, you're not really allowed to say much, but I, I will, I will give them props for that. Um, 
because that's got to be really hard. I mean, I, I wouldn't have been, I'd be like, you know, fuck you guys. Yeah, we would. <laughs> you know? But so. this says a lot to me right here because this is, I'm sorry, High Guardian Spice is the same thing. They're talking about you have a few new projects, including one in the DC universe. And they're like, um, can you tell us anything about those? Uh, I can't say too much yet, but I'm developing a, developing a brand new animated adult drama that I am very excited about. I've had these characters from that show in my head since I was in middle school. Okay, I'm going to stop you right there. It's not going to be an adult show. It's not going to be a DC show. Basically, you're locked, into, you're locked into this whole idea of middle school because that's what the show was. I, my first thought, not even knowing this quote, yeah. I was like, this is, a, this is a show for middle school. That was my thought when I saw it. A, a, you know, identity politics laden show for middle schoolers. And then I see this and I'm like, okay, your idea of adult drama and what most people's idea of adult drama are two different things. Because it's going to be probably more of the same because you are clearly stuck in middle school. Yeah. And I'm like, if they're raised characters, why are we doing a DC show? That's a good question. Um, Unless there's something that we're supposed to know about. Like they're starting something new. Are they starting their own streaming service? Are they starting their own uh, They did that and they consolidated it with, I don't oh know. I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, so Ray, you know, probably, you know, wanting to keep working with Warner needs to keep their mouth shut. And that's, that's kind of what happened. Anyway, uh, yeah, the reviews are not good on Crunchyroll. Again, but a lot of them are because, I think, honestly, because people are mad about the money getting out, reallocated. The the voice acting was weird. The it one was, character, the Slime Boy, was that his name? Slime Boy? It yeah. just sounded like they just found some rando dude at a convenience store. And, like, the animation didn't sync up with... You know, it, it felt it felt like there was a lot of cost cutting. On it did, show. and it says the writing seems lazy, contrived, just plain boring. I would agree with that for a lot of it. It's that's true, especially the ones Kate left wrote. Anyway, yeah. um, but you know, I will say about Slime Boy though is his studying around and stuff actually was more relatable to me. Being working with kids, it seemed that was something that I, I think would actually be something you'd see. But yeah, it was, and the, and then the artwork. Well, the beginning when they were on a train, it was basically them just sliding the stuff across. It wasn't really even animation. It was, yeah. There were a lot of. Well, this is happening a lot with anime too, where you know, compare anime from ten or fifteen years ago to what you're seeing now, and I think because the demand is so high for it, that there are a lot of corners being cut with digital tricks. You know, you can just slide characters across the scene. You can fudge things. I've seen a lot of like cheesy transformation effects. Um, the only studios out there that seem to really be, you know, animating, animating anymore would be like Studio Trigger and UFO Table. Mm -hmm. A lot of the studios, even if you compare the new Fruits Basket to the original series, it's clear they're using more digital tricks yeah, now true. than the original. There's a lot of like static faces. It's just the mouth moves or you don't even see the mouth move. They'll have, you know, characters back turned to you. And then it's just, you know, 30 seconds of dialogue as right. it just kind of slowly pans over. You a might static. see a hair move or something. Yeah. Maybe some wind. rain or something. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's true actually. But you know, it, 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 it was, the voice acting was lazy. The animation was lazy and the writing was lazy. I would agree with that. I, I would I would agree with this one right here. Not great, but not as bad as people are saying. I yeah, don't think that's what I that's where I'm at. I don't think it's the worst thing ever. Um, I mean, it it was very clear what the show was going to be when they they announced it. Uh, you know, and again, if it were on Cartoon Network, there would not be nearly the outrage that there has been about it. It definitely is not for me, but you know. It's for the Steven Universe crowd. I would agree with this, too. Characters are mostly one-dimensional to begin with. They get broader over time. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's true. Um, if you're after show the Saturday morning cartoon vibe with inclusivity and the messages about that, then, yeah, this one's for you. Um, I would I would say this is pretty fair. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's it's fantastic. And, and like, the people that are, like, the shippers and stuff are like, oh, my God, I'm on Team Snapdragon. Oh, my God, yay, yay, yay. That's it's, who it was designed for. Exactly. Yeah, you know, it's and designed for that. So. A lot of these people are the same people who will tell you when you when you, when you challenge them, you can't talk to me like that because I'm a minor and I'm neurodivergent. And I'm like, yeah, that, that, that's, that's, that's who this is made for. Um, I'm a major asshole. So. Yeah, I do what I say. I'm like, well, I'm a mom and a teacher. I don't know why you make you think I'll put up with your shit. Um, I don't put up with the shit for my kids or students. Why would I put up with it from you? The thing is, there are a lot of animes out there that touch on the same kind of topics, but they're actual anime and they do better and they're and they're actually actually for adults. Um, so that's why well finally a diverse and inclusive show is not really true because they've already the anime's been doing it for years. Oh and real quick I want to point out why the hell in the first episode are all the ogres like the, they're like the slave labor in this world? Yeah that was weird wasn't it? Uh, it's just we like you know rise of shield here we should cancel it because clearly you know they're they're being used for the brawn. 
Yeah, and I'm like, wait, we had such out outrage over orcs. Right, so this is a class system? You yeah, know? I know. Oh, wait, I they know. said, oh, here, they said they... Orcs have suffered a racist undertone depiction of fantasy settings that appears higher in spaces, even unintended, and perpetuate them. Yes, that's one of the first things I noticed, is that they they did it too. And I was like, wait a minute. Were they they're, orcs? They were awfully big for orcs. I don't think they're orcs, but, you know, I thought more like an ogre. But yeah. anyway, it's this whole idea that you're, not, that you're supposed to be like this class system type shit. And there was clearly a class system where these guys were like the, the manual labor people. Yeah, they were like getting the bags. They were, and they were dumb. Yeah, yeah, they were dumb idiots. And yeah. I was like, they completely did that. I agree with this article on that, at least that part, because I thought the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting. This is coming from Anime Feminist, so take it. <laughs> but they're they're basically like, yeah, this show's, yeah, it's okay. I mean, this is basically the show right here. They said, yeah, they even kind of complained about the, the in-your-face. It is. It's... Um, it's so what stands out more in the series, though, is the explicit LGBTQ positivity, mainly in the form of Sage's gay cousins who live in the city uh, with a loft apartment. Okay. Uh, was it uh, Anais and Aloe? Anise. Anise and Aloe appear inseparable as a couple. And it, the show seems to want to leave nothing by chance by absolutely including an oversized yes. wedding portrait on their wall screaming. Did I not point that out to you? So I saw it. Absolutely married. Did I not <laughs> tell you that? Yep. I pointed that out because you missed that part. You had walked away. And I said, just in case you didn't want to know. I said, they made it sure that their picture. That's exact. These are all exact things I pointed out. Immediately, yeah. I noticed this stuff. Um, this is interesting, too. It said, yeah, it's an adolescent show. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I would. Yeah. Um, it's not really a control show. Uh, you know, it's cute. It's not too edgy. They said, I'm kind of curious why. Yes, yeah, what we said. Why they put a disclaimer warning at the beginning of the show. And the things that, was that you know, the, strong, the, the swearing, a couple bad words and stuff, that could have been edited out easily and gone to another network. Yeah. I, I mean, that's, that's, the, it was, it's just this whole thing. I was like, I, what the hell is this? And, it it, it just, is. It's like, who's is, it for? Who's and it, it was for? funny because when they made the swear words, it was so, they're la it's like laughable in the setting. When they swear, it's almost funny because you're like, they're trying too hard. It's like, I'm an edge lord, you know? It's like, you know, it reminds me of middle school kids trying yeah. to be like, they're badass. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Did my mom hear me? You yeah, know, that's it, what it reminds me of. It was like, oh, we said, damn. <laughs> you said shit. Oh, you know, it, it was. It, it yeah, was, I mean, it, we didn't have the, uh, what's it, Rosemary. We didn't have her like screaming in the middle of it, like, I'm going to fuck you bitches up. As she pulls out her sword. That'd be kind of funny. That actually. would be funny, actually. Yeah. Um, there's, there's, there's no, this is not a case of queer baiting, which I agree. It's not. They, they flat out tell you. Oh, there's um, no bait. It's, it's all the way through. But they the set completion. up for shippers to have a field day too. Yeah, it's a they have it set up that maybe Sage likes Rosemary, but maybe she likes Snapdragon, but Snapdragon likes to, wants to be a girl and Snapdragon likes Sage <laughs> and, um, oh, and then th and time likes the mermaid woman. And it's just like, you know, <laughs> do you have a diagram? I, I see. I, I checked out that. So there's so like, many I mean, ways you can ship the hell out of this thing. It's like, you got two and a half episodes out of me. That is more time than I give. I only went back just so, so I could be fair. And I, I only went back and watch the rest i did not have interest in it now that being said do i think the best story is bad no i think there's enough in it that'll keep you interested ish throughout the whole thing um it does get better i think further after you get into it like halfway i think it does seem that it gets more interesting when they finally get to something that's you know worth watching um and there's a little bit of intrigue and some kind of story going on it gets a little better mm. um you feel like there's some you know there's more of a story there but that's like halfway through yeah um do I think, do I recommend you waste your time on it? No, not unless this is something that you really, really are into. Um, there's much better shows out there to watch. Yeah, it's, it's. But it's not a one star. It's not one. It's very middling. Yeah, I would not specific. think, I think one star is unfair. Uh, you know, and I, I think, again, if it hadn't just been all the fanfare and the whatever, people would have been like, okay, just throw it on the Cartoon Network and. Okay, here's my, my litmus test. Would I watch it again? No. No. God, no. That's my litmus <laughs> test. <laughs> but it's not for me. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's it's, it, I don't know who it's for. Uh, I think it's for, what I think it's for is for middle school kids and they're trying to, you know, do a show about accepting others while perpetuating different lifestyle choices to middle school kids. Probably. And, and uh, you know, for some of those kids, that might be a really helpful thing. I think it was probably designed for Cartoon Network. And to be honest, it, uh, feel, yeah. it feels like it was Cartoon Network and then Cartoon Network, we know, was canceling a bunch of shows that were... Too old for preschool, but not adult. Yeah, you know? so, so it got weird... thrown here. So they were like, oh, where, where do we have some money? Oh, Crunchyroll's got money. 
We'll we'll mm-hmm. we'll do it on we'll put it on Crunchyroll. But yeah. this is didn't deserve the warning. Even the violence yeah, was cartoony. It was very tame. Um, it was it made me sad a couple times. Um, but I hate watching the animals get killed. And um, you know, there's a couple swear words, but nothing that I thought was like, oh my god, put a warning on that. And it was like they said fuck or something. Sorry, mom. Um, and the only thing about the sexual explicit is what because you're saying you know not being straight is sexually explicit. I don't know. And if that's the case. Netflix, what the hell? <laughs> so, you know, anyway. Uh, anyway, a lot of, you know, AMA News Network, you know, they pointed out that Crunchyroll Originals, all the way around it, it was a failed experiment. It was. It was a huge disaster. I would agree. Uh, on many, many levels. Um, this was, the again, this probably was not the first It's not as bad thing. as X-Arm, I'm sure. No. I, it's not as bad I, as I, X-Arm. I tried, I tried watching X-Arm. I'm like, I don't even know what I'm watching. I've seen better shit on YouTube mm-hmm. from people just kind of working out of the corner of their, their bedroom. Um, I don't know what the hell is going on here. I almost feel like there was some misappropriation of funds just all the way around with the originals. The only ones that have been successful, I think, are the Webtoon ones. I think it's because Webtoon was kicking money in. And they had an audience already. They already had an audience, um, yeah. Now, oh, I want to mention this real quick and then we'll wrap this up because I don't yeah. think there's anything else I can say about this. Um, was... The, I do think this is a catalyst of why some people didn't get their shows picked up. Yeah. The backlash towards this show. Um, we talked about that with, um, the other, what was her name, Sarah? Yeah. And she had had a, a pitch. And it was really good. I, I would have watched yeah. it. And it was more uh, adult than this was, obviously. I mean, the way the characters looked and everything. And it was, you know, it was not picked up. And I do think that because of the, their Kickstarter-esque commercial and the backlash of things like this or she run uh, different stuff, I think networks were being a lot more um, cautious in picking up shows about diversity. Yeah, I think because it didn't. But the thing is, is it, it's diversity is not the issue. What, what's going no, on? Not. What's going on is these studios because you know they're they're trying to get woke points. They're hiring in a lot of cases. They're hiring people that frankly aren't qualified to be showrunners. Hiring them at a very young age. They're plucking them off a Tumblr without any real animation experience. I know everybody's like, oh yeah, I want to be a showrunner. But look at like compare the 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 animation showrunners of today to even the showrunners we had 15, 20 years ago, a lot of times you, you had to work your way up to be a showrunner. You had to work in the trenches. You had to work as an animator, start as mm-hmm. an in-betweener, you know, pay your dues. Uh, and then eventually you got, you'd work up to showrunner. And now it's like, oh, you're, you're 22 and you're popular on Tumblr. Here's a couple million dollars. You figure it out. Now in the case of She-Ra, they brought in Chuck Austin who had decades of experience to help break the ship, and there's a huge difference between season one and season two. Yeah. This show's never going to have the opportunity because it's, it's over and it's, done with Well, it. I want to point out something real quick, but I'm thinking about it too. Um, and then we can wrap this up because it's a very long long video, but we're wrapping up this whole Guardian the Spice saga. thing that we have been covering for a while. I want to point out something else I noticed about this show, which is another reason I think it's for kids. Their parents are all assholes in some way. Like, uh, Rosemary's mom's missing. Okay, so I guess her parents aren't. So, well, her mom might be bad, but they're surprised. And then you have Sage, whose parents are like really strict. You have to only do old magic. You can't do new magic. And then her, um, the sister, which is her aunt, which is married to the other woman, were like, you know, well, your mom's lying because she tried it herself once. And then she just now didn't want to admit to it. She she experimented, and now she won't admit to it. So you shouldn't feel bad if you want to experiment. That one time in magic college. That's right. <laughs> one time in magic camp. Anyway. <laughs> this one time in magic camp, I took my wand. And I- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then you have I forget what the dwarf girl's name is. My mind just went blank. Obnoxious blonde girl. I actually liked her the best. She, her parents, basically, she's like the only girl with all these brothers, and she's there to basically take care of her brothers and help them run the shop. And then they had another little girl. They finally had another baby that's a girl because they have a million kids, and she blows up at them because they want her to quit school just to stay home and help them take care of all the all the kids they had. It's, and I kind of like wait, so you guys can't keep your, your pants on and then your daughter has to watch all your kids for you. It sounds like it was like a dig at the Duggars. <laughs> it does. It's it, breeders. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so I, yeah, I mean, it almost feels like the theme. I, this is coming from 
a middle-aged straight white guy, but it sounds like the theme is if your own family sucks, you can go find another family. Basically. Your friends can be your family. But then it was confusing because they also keep making, putting messages in there that you should take the old with the new and you shouldn't forget the old to move to the new. And I thought that was a little interesting because, you know, what we, what we keep seeing is everybody wants to throw everything away to act like they invented it. Yeah. And they do have a, a theme going through that you don't do that. You try to merge them to make something better, which um, is great until they try to do things like, you know, the Nishira show and things like that. So anyway, long description. Wow, long it was very long, long, but there was a lot to talk about. Finally wrap this stuff up. Hopefully that's the last we have to talk about this thing. Yeah, I think it, I think it's over at this point. This is the end of the spice. Oh, uh, thank God. The, end of the, the last of the summer spice. I'm so spice. tired of, I'm tired of it. I think we were tired of it when we first saw it. But yeah, like it's, it's not the worst thing ever. Definitely not for us though, right? It's not the best thing ever either. It's, it's definitely it's, not it's, the best. It's like middling. Yeah. But it's, you know, if that's what you like and this is your kind of show, then, you know, more power to you. I'm going to wrap it up. Yep. All right, guys. We are, we are over and done. High Guardian Spice is over. We'll talk to you later. Bye.